glad you're here this afternoon. I'm William Charles Leonard. I was 16 year, years old when I went to work for W.W. W. Wilson Dry Goods. Six years later in 1905, I bought into the firm and the name changed to Leonard and Wilson. In the early 1920s, I bought out Wilson and formed a new partnership with K.C. Fleming. Soon after that, I bought out Mr. Fleming and the name became W.C. Leonard's. My son Billy was working in the store at a young age. He learned the business from the bottom up. His first job was, in the stock, was to stock woolen blankets in a tin warehouse in the hot summer <laughs> And his day began at 7 a.m. and ended at 9 p.m. And he made a whopping 50 cents a day. <laughs> In 1929, our business was very good. And I had the idea of opening uh, chain stores. So we opened stores in Ethel and Ware and McCool and Ackerman. But then the uh, stock market crashed and to uh, weather that economic storm, we had to close those stores. Oh wait, look who's coming in with us. I've got John Brand Turner here with us. <laughs> I am John Brand Turner. I'm one of two men in Kosciuszko that when I get my cigarettes, I have to unzip my pants. But, um, I know you wonder why I had to gargle right there just then, but I have learned a neat trick. I like to take a drink at work. Now, I don't take a drink at 4 o'clock in the afternoon or 3 or 2 or 11. I drink all day long. <laughs> so, what I do, I go down to where we store the cabinet and I get myself a little drink. And all the employees will tell you when I come back up, I'm happy. <laughs> but you say, well, how can the employees not know about it or the customers? Mr. Rain, Mr. Rain, when I was gone one time sick, there must have been a hundred Mr. Rain bottles. Get that Mr. Rain and they can't tell me. Anyway, I worked here in the store and I worked with uh, Ed Howe Runner and Jenny Carnathan. Mr. Leonard was such a good man, but back in those days, we had a little machine. You could see what the shoe, shy, uh, shoe size at the time that you wore. It was actually an x-ray machine. And we finally realized that if, by using that x-ray machine, and we used no protection, we were tearing people's feet up. <laughs> and we saw somebody walking and they had Jake, we thought, I think that they had Jake legs and they really been hurt by our x-ray. That's not, I'm stretching that. But anyway, I want to turn it back over to Mr. Leonard. I'm going downstairs. Let me, I, I want to tell you one thing about Mr. Leonard. Though. A few years back, we decided to really get serious about ladies' underwear. And when Mr. Leonard and I decided we wanted to get serious about getting into ladies' underwear, it was one of the best decisions we ever made. So, thank you, Mr. Leonard. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Hey, go down and check Johnny, it out. Johnny yeah. Sherrill worked. Johnny yeah. Sherrill. Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Taylor. I worked for this show. The mantle passed to my son, Billy. And in 1973, Billy purchased this building. Uh, which was the uh, Ben Franklin store and added it to our other uh, square footage and we really had a big building then. Also, Billy opened the Cambridge shop on the north side of the square at about the same time. Some other interesting uh, Leonard's facts uh, are that uh, they oil the floors every day. They swept and oil the floors every day to hold the dust down. And as soon as they got through uh, oiling the floors, they brushed off the felt hats to get the dust off the felt hats. They were open six days a week. Many stores in Kosciuszko closed on Thursday afternoons, but Leonard's was open all week. And at the height of their uh, uh, success, 
they had over 50 employees in their business. Oh, Dave Glass. Glad I to see you have a crowd here, Mr. Leonard, and I, you know, I'm running for, uh, uh, I'm running for a representative for the second time I was elected in the 20s, running in, in the 60s. I would have changed my pants, but I think some of you ladies like these pants. So. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there is a room going around about me. I want to set the record straight. My opponent is saying that I have over $100,000 in Merchants and Farmers Bank. Where was the bank then, Billy? Right over here? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I want to set that record straight. I have over $200,000 <laughs> farmers money. And you say, how did I make all that money? Been making practice law. Oh, Jelly and I loaned money out. I was a lender of money, I practiced law, but I also loaned a lot of money. Well, what was my key to knowing how I would get paid? Your old boss, Mr. Thornton, taught me if the job title starts with a T, don't loan them any money. Plumbers, painters, politicians, prostitutes, and preachers. Hold on. I don't know. Them. I don't know them. Probably if it's an individual whose last name starts with a T. Head it. Don't want them. Appreciate y'all listening to me. Hope you both. Thanks. And a wide variety, and that's what it took to do business and be a successful store. As I change hats, we'll all just uh, stay where we are. Let's don't move next door. But next door would have been Hammond Hardware. And I am also now Will Hammond. Hammond Hardware started in the 1880s with N.O. Thompson as the owner. Thompson died in 1892 and the store was sold to W.J. Hammond Sr. Products that they sold in those days included hand tools, housewares, hardware like nuts and bolts, plumbing and electrical supplies, farm supplies like horseshoes, and sporting goods and many other things. They associated themselves with true value uh, to increase their buying power. Other items in the store would include pots and pans, axes, axe handles, and later Norley Jennings ran the extensive housewares and gifts department. You could find it all at Hammond Hardware. Oh, do I see another one of our ah, prominent people? Dropped, oh, Willie Kraft. Willie Kraft, I'm sorry, I dropped my eyeball. I got a glass eye. Put my eye out when I was six years old with a pair of scissors. But I didn't have any pain damage from it, so I'm okay. But uh, anyway, I just stopped by. I saw you one of my tape uh, for raising houses. It was worn out, I had to get another one. Uh, I just want to let you know, uh, I built up so many houses in Kosciuszko back then, right in the war. They were big houses for all these people coming back. They were 800 to 1,200 square feet, big houses. <laughs> and I later became an appraiser, and I want people to say, well, Willie, how do you appraise that thing? I would use three different methods. methods. I would use the cost approach, the uh, comparable sale approach, the income approach. I would do all those calculations. Then I would put my feet up on my chair, get my cigar out and light it and say, what is that damn thing worth? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, thanks for coming by. Will. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good to see you, Mr. Good to see you. The hardware store, too, was open six days a week. Three generations of Hammonds ran Hammond hardware for over a hundred years. Will, Pat, Victor Hammond. Thank you for coming by. Yeah,